In this video, we are going to be playing with Artemis and try to map transcriptomes onto a genome. So the first thing you need to know is where your genome file is. And I like to keep mine in a folder on the desktop so it's easy to find. And there it is. So I'm going to open up Artemis by going into my Applications folder and double-clicking on Artemis. And um, it first asks to set a working directory. You can leave it at Applications, so that's perfectly fine. I'm going to change it over to my desktop folder. Um, Artemis is a little rough, so it doesn't navigate your, no, uh, your folder system very well. So you have to actually go back to the root directory um, and find the desktop folder by going through Users, find your username, and then there's the desktop folder. So I'm going to select my folder and choose, okay. So now Artemis is open. Um, and now I can open up the chromosome file um, by going into my folder. And none of the files here are recognized by Artemis because it's looking for a specific um, format, which we don't have. But I can simply just select all files and everything becomes available. So I'm gonna select the chromosome GenBank file open that up and it's going to warn me which I'm going to ignore and here we have a map and a lot of information of our genome so uh, this very complicated screen actually is broken up into three parts we have a map of the annotations of the genome um, uh, both the the uh, gene annotations blocked in white and the uh, coding region annotations blocked in cyan. So it's the difference between the genes and the proteins that uh, they code for. Um, there are also a bunch of stop codons that are um, annotated here in uh, black. Um, in the second part, we have sequences. We have the nucleotide sequence, both the, the sense and the antisense. And then we also have all of the amino acid sequences um, of all, uh, the from the translations of all six reading frames uh, from the nucleotide sequences. Finally, we have um, a list of all of the annotations um, and uh, information about those annotations. So these are all the, the genes and the coding regions that are mapped out up here. Uh, the sequence information is not as important to us right now, so we can actually minimize this by clicking on the double arrow here. Um, and the stop codons just make everything look like a mess. So um, if you right click, you can get this nice drop down menu and uncheck stop codons, and that just cleans it right up. Uh, finally, I'm just going to get rid of whatever that is um, by going to the display menu and unclick and checking uh, show entry buttons. So we have um, all of the annotations mapped on the genome and all of the annotations described here in this list. So I can uh, click on a gene and it'll highlight the gene itself here. And then I can click on the coding region associated with that gene, and it tells me, oh, it's a, an exonuclease of DNA polymerase 3. You can actually get more information about uh, the coding regions if you go to View, uh, select, sorry, Selected Features, or Command V. And that gives you the entire annotation. So the gene name, the function, the notes, um, the, the product, and the sequence itself. So we can scroll along the, the chromosome using this side scroller, but we can also um, zoom in and out by using the scroller here. So zooming in, you scroll up. And zooming out, you scroll down. This gives you a more complicated but more comprehensive view of a, a larger, larger region of the chromosome. Um, so now we want to actually map a transcriptome onto this genome. So we'll start with the wild types transcriptome. We'll, um, to do this, you go up to graph and add user plot. Um, and we want the wild type transcriptome, so wt.text. And there it is. 
Um, it, right now, it looks like a very thin green line with a little, tiny little bump, and that's about it. So we're going to change how this looks so we can actually see the data um, and interpret it better. So the first thing we're going to do is scale it by uh, right click or control click and select scaling. And we actually want to make this a little bit more extreme so that we can uh, see things a little bit better. So we're going to uh, right click again and set the min max values. We're going to send, set the max to 10,000. See what that does. Um, we're going to also then scroll up here and this um, sort of condenses all the information um, into a two-dimensional plot. Um, finally, I want to change the line itself so I can see things better. And so again, right click, uh, configure, I'm going to increase the line size. And I'm going to change the color to blue because that's what makes me happy. Um, so I can click OK. So now I have uh, transcriptome data for um, all of the uh, genes that are annotated on this genome. So we can actually zoom out a bit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we'll zoom out and we can start to see some patterns of uh, genes that are highly expressed versus genes that are not so expressed. Um, and we can even see large clumps like this one. So maybe I want to know a little bit more about what this large clump is here. So I can actually highlight it here and then zoom in. And because it's highlighted, it will remain in the focus of the screen. And so what we have here are RSPJ, RPLC, RPLP, RPLO. So we have a lot of ribosomal genes, um, which are very important for everything. So of course they're getting expressed a lot. So now I want to compare the wild type transcriptome to a deletion mutant transcriptome. So go back up to graph and then add user plot. And this time we're going to select d114.txt. This gives us a second um, transcriptome. So we're going to slide this down a bit so we can see things better. And once again we're going to have to uh, modify how this looks. So right click scaling and right click set min max. So we're going to set this at 10,000 again. Okay. And uh, we scroll up and right click configure and change the line thickness, change the color. Okay. So now we can uh, zoom out again a bit and see that you know there are some similarities between these two transcriptomes, but there are also some differences. Um, some genes are more expressed in wild type, while other genes are more expressed in the mutant. Um, but instead of having to try to uh, tell the difference between, say, this line and this line, we actually have a third plot that we can use um, that measure that that already has the differences between the two um, transcriptomes. So go up to graph, go to user plot. We're going to add uh, two log fc. Dot text. So this is the two log fold change difference between uh, wild type and the deletion mutant. So once again, uh, right click scaling um, and we're going to set the min max values. And because this is looking at differences, um, we're going to have negative numbers. So the min is going to be negative 1.5 and the max is going to be positive 1.5. We'll set that there. Um, and then zoom. And uh, chain. we're going to configure the line as well. Uh, okay, and I'm going to keep that as green. So now we have a nice idea. We'll slide this down a bit more. 
um, we have a nice idea of um, how the transcriptomes differ. So we can actually look for patterns a little bit better um, as we're scrolling along. For example, there is this region that is highly overexpressed in the deletion mutant uh, compared to the wild type. So we can select this region and uh, zoom in and see what's going on. So here we have a bunch of key A, key B, key Y genes. Um, then we also have some FLII, FLGI, FLAD, um, MOTD. So these are all motility genes. So we have a bunch of chemotaxis genes and a bunch of flagellar genes. Um, and so maybe what we want to do is find out a little bit more about these genes in comparison to um, other proteins in other organisms. And so what we can do is we can actually um, compare or we, we, can, we can blast these uh, protein sequences against a uh, database, a non-redundant database in the NCBI um, database. And the way we can do this is by going up to Run, and we can go to NCBI Searches. And since I clicked on a um, coding region, an, an amino acid sequence, I'm going to do a blast P, which will compare it to other amino acid sequences. And um, here, I want to uh, search a non-redundant database. We can keep the number of hits to 500. And then uh, we'll leave all of these settings alone. Um, typically, you don't need to change them unless you're doing something very specific. So we'll say OK. And now it's going to send our sequence of MOTD um, over to the NCBI website where it will proceed to blast the um, amino acid sequence against other amino acid sequences in the database. Okay, so here we have the results of the blast. And um, here, the first we see a graphic of the, how our query matches up with all of the uh, top 100 hits. Um, and then we can scroll down and see a list of these hits and including uh, different proteins and the organisms that they're from uh, and information about um, how well they match up. Um, so we can see a bunch of different organisms, mostly cyanorhizobium, which makes a lot of sense um, considering it was from a cyanorhizobium uh, genome. Uh, Ensifer is another name for cyanorhizobium. Um, and then we have rhizobium and agrobacterium and other organisms that are pretty closely related. So if we just go to the first um, hit, then we see a, an alignment between our sequence and the, the sequence of the um, cyanorhizobium D, and uh, we can actually find out more about uh, the, the hit by clicking on the sequence ID and we come up with a annotation or all the information about this organism or about this protein. So uh, what the definition of it, where it comes from, um, the function, different uh, regions within the protein itself, and of course the sequence. So uh, now we have an idea of how to uh, visualize genomes in Artemis, how to map transcriptome data onto those genomes, and how to blast um, sequences from Artemis directly into NCBI.